a very good morning here i am with my second video for the students of class 10 yes i will be taking the english literature in my first video i had explained the poem i know why the cage bird sings by maya angelou i had uh, explained in brief about the poem today i will be taking up the title of the poem why maya gave this title to her poem i'll read from a book i have you can listen maya wrote this poem title i know why the cage bird sings in the year 1969 actually the title of the poem is also the title used for an autobiography written by maya maya also had six autobiographies that recalled her early childhood and early adult experiences the poem and the autobiographies have the same message to put across the title of both the poems and her autobiography were inspired by a similar word in the third stanza in a poem titled sympathy by paul lawrence maya revised sympathy by portraying a free bird besides a cage bird in his poem the cage bird is also indeed yearning to be free we also have like in every other poem themes every poet when they write a poem they are inspired and through their poem they would like to give a message or a theme in this poem the theme that maya would like to portray is freedom freedom from slavery and hope i'll just read a little maya's poem revolves around the theme of freedom and slavery the theme extends to the painful aspects of slavery injustice ranging from discrimination segregation racism poverty abuse insecurity and the like and its consequences the poem speaks about the hope that people have by the song of the cage bird the readers also learn how maya might have felt when in some way she was still experiencing slavery the poetess wants us to take home the idea that people with similar experiences as she may feel the same way like a cage bird who is not free but has not lost hope i would now like to once again stanza by stanza explain to our students the meaning maya wanted to portray through this poem well the first stanza goes like this a free bird leaps on the back of the wind maya to these two lines wants her readers to realize to experience that a bird that is free has the liberty the freedom to fly when and where it wants to it flies in the sky among the clouds it floats in the wind and wherever it wants to go it is free to go and floats downstream till the current end the free bird floats with the wind wherever it wants to float in whichever direction it wants to float it floats and it goes along and dips in the orange ray sun a free bird is so free that it can fly the entire day it can fly in the sky with the sun shining on it with the sun as its background and dares to claim the sky the free bird is at liberty it is so free that it thinks itself to be the owner of the sky itself there is no other bird no other disturbance and the bird is free in a, the second extract maya goes on to describe the plight of a cage bird 
but a bird that stalks down her narrow cage these line means that a cage bird has to live in the confinement of its cage it has no option but to walk up and down that cage it can see out it can long to be out it can long to be free but all these things are clipped by its bondage then can seldom see through his bars of rage the bird that is confined to a cage is confined its wings are clipped it has to keep its ego it has to keep its freedom with itself its wings are clipped and his feet are tied even though in literal meaning it does not mean that the bird's wings are cut clip means cut it means that being in the cage being in the confinement of the cage it is as good as the bird's wings being cut its feet even though it has the movement even though it is free to move yet it has just a certain amount of space in that cage to move about and it it is as good as its feet being tied down so he opens his throat to sing a cage bird being in the confinement of its cage being in the condition it is forced to live in it has no other option but to just sit in the cage open its mouth and to chirp and sing about its plight and its condition the third stanza goes on to say the cage bird sings with fearful thrill the poet in the third stanza keeps to the cage bird and the poet tells us that the cage bird sings with fearful thrill meaning that the bird that is cage has a sense of fear fear that it will never ever be able to be free in life it sings of things unknown because it is caged because it is in that confinement it has never seen the world it does not know what the world looks like so it can only sing about the world sing about things that it has never seen but long for still it means that a cage bird longs for things it has imagined longs for things that it sees through the bars of the cage longs for its freedom and this tune is heard on the distant hill now the bird that is caged it sings with its open heart open voice and its voice its voice of fear can be heard at great distances in fact the poet goes on to tell us that the voice of the cage bird can be heard even at a distant hill imagine for the cage bird sings of its fear and every song that the cage bird sings about is a song of its freedom i'll go on with the fourth stanza the free bird thinks of another breeze and the trade birds trade wind soft to singing trees now we come back to the free bird now when a free bird is free to fly is at liberty to fly it just goes up into the sky floats about with the current of the sky with the breeze that is there and wherever it wants to go it looks down sees the ground below it and keeps on flying wherever it wants to sit wherever it wants to land it just picks a spot and it makes its decision to land and it comes down <coughs> excuse me and the fat worms waiting on a dawn bright lawn and he names the sky his own the free bird while flying in the sky is looking down at its food wherever it spots worms insects that could be made for its food it decides with the wind it comes down it 
comes down on the grass, begins to eat, sit there for as long as he wants, eat as much as he wants. When his stomach is full, it decides to go on with his journey. In the fourth stanza, the fifth stanza, sorry, the poet comes back. But a cage bird stands on the grave of dreams. His shadow shouts on a nightmare scream. We come back to the cage bird in which Maya talks about the plight of the cage bird once again. That the cage bird only has its dreams to fall back on. And dreams of being free, dreams of having liberty to fly in the sky. Dreaming itself to be free, it through its frustration, to its rage, shouts out and sings. It only can see its shadow. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied. So he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird once again is depicted to be having clipped wings. Its throat is there to sing, he opens his throat to sing and it realizes that it's going to be in this confinement of the cage till the end, that is till its death. So it makes up its mind, it makes a resolution that let me at least enjoy my life singing. Even though the plight of the bird is sad in sorrow, but yet it has the urge to sing about its condition, sing about its longing, sing about its freedom. The sixth stanza is a repeat of the third stanza. Once again, the cage bird sings with fearful thrill of things unknown. Again, the poet is saying that the cage bird in the confinement of its cage sings with fearful thrill of things unknown but long for. It sings about things that it has a longing for. Sings about things it has never seen in its life. It has only imagined it. That is the plight of the cage bird. And his tune is heard on the distant hill. It sings so loud with all its might, with all its power, that to a distance the bird song can be heard. On the distant hill for the cage bird sing of the film, the only thing a cage bird has to sing about is the freedom it is longing for, freedom that it is churning for, freedom that it thinks would never come to it. So by these six very powerful stanzas, the poetess Meyer Angelou has shown not only the condition of the bird, but the condition of the black Americans who were forced to live lives of slavery. At the time, Meyer was a young girl. She and her family were also humiliated, were also treated as slaves. And this inspired her to write about the conditions of her community, the conditions of the black Americans in America. We have the historical background to this poetry also. Poets usually pick up themes some are poets of nature, some are historical poets. We have the historical background of this poem. It is the African Americans or the black Americans have lived in America where ongoing white sum supremacy existed. We had these black Americans treated as slaves. The whites considered themselves to be superior and being superior or thinking themselves superior, they tortured, they bounded these black Americans to be their slaves. 
America have unjustly endured many injustices ranging from slavery, discrimination, segregation and racism throughout the 19th century and beginning of the 20th century. Maya Angelou faced this discrimination in her life also. So my dear students, as we come to the end of this poem, you must study this poem with the sense that look around you and see how different layers of our society are also subjugated. How in our own country, even though times have advanced, even though times have gone by, yet we have different types of discrimination taking place in our society also. We have the rich who ill treat the poor because of their wealth. They think themselves superior to the poor people. We have the educated looking down on the educated. In our Indian society, we feel or men feel that they are superior to women. Women in Indian society are suppressed. Girls in Indian society are also suppressed in certain areas. I am not saying everywhere, but in certain areas. So my dear children, by studying this poetry, it is my appeal to look down deeply and as each individual student try to realize that in what way we can make our country a more free country, a country where everyone is the same, liberty is there for everyone. So my dear students, I would end this second video of mine with the hope that you can learn looking at your books which you have by the side of your whenever school reopens once again i'll be there to explain personally once again in the class but since we have no option this is the only way i can reach y'all and uh, that's how this class can be taken i also would like to remind each student that stay safe, stay home, try and convince your parents also to be home because if the entire family is at home, be sure coronavirus is not going to tackle you. You're not going to be infected by this virus. So my dear students, once again, I wish you all the best, stay safe. Stay happy. Goodbye.